What's going on guys? Welcome to Gunplay News episode 42 for October 2018. Uh, it's been a while since the last Gunplay News. I didn't do one for September and for August it was also just kind of a shortish kind of basic one. Uh, basically I've just been busy. Uh, if you've wondering why, if you've been wondering why the content on my channel has been a little bit slow and a little bit kind of lackluster recently maybe, it's because I've been focused on working on finishing a couple of commissions that I had, uh, one of them being the PG Strike here and the other one being the Master Grade Gundam 05, which is over there getting its final top coat on now. So once those are done, I can just be kind of free of any commissions and I'll be working on a whole bunch of more interesting stuff for you guys to watch, tutorials and back to just like more uh, varied content for you. So I hope you'll be looking forward to that. Uh, I'm really happy with how both of those commissions came out. Uh, so those are really cool. I'll be showing those to you guys in videos uh, as well. And just one thing, anytime I mention commissions, uh, inevitably I get a message or two after that with people asking about getting a commission. And uh, I'm not going to be taking any more commissions now for the time being. Uh, just because I'd rather work on my own things. But that said, any of my stuff that I make, that you guys see me make on my channel, if I don't mention specifically that it's like a gift for someone or something, then pretty much anything I make, I'm willing to sell or I'm wanting to sell. So, uh, like, for example, my HG Mega Shiki is still not sold, and my GBWC entry, the Haro Grays uh, diorama that I built, that's also still for sale. So if you're interested in buying either of those, then get at me and we'll sort it out. But... Yeah, no more commissions for the time being. I just want to just kind of not have that in the back of my mind. I just want to kind of be free to just work on whatever. So uh, with that being said, let's get on into the news because uh, we haven't done this for a while. There's a lot of things to talk about. So a lot of the stuff you guys probably already have seen and it may not be new to you. But as always, I'm going to throw in a little bit of my opinions and uh, thoughts about these things as well. So... Listen on if you're interested in hearing about a whole bunch of Gumpla stuff. Now, a few other points of news before we get into that. Uh, the Gumpla Talk fundraiser and giveaway is ending at the end of this month, October uh, 31st. So check that out if you haven't yet. That's just uh, on GoFundMe. I'll put a link to that down below. It's gofundme.com slash Gumpla Talk. Uh, and basically what we're doing is raising money for the National Alopecia Areata Foundation. It's really hard for me to say, so I have to read that there. Uh, it's a foundation that we wanted to choose to support, and we hope that you guys will check out the link to that. So check out the story there on the GoFundMe page. And aside from the Perfect Grade Astray Red Frame that we're giving away as a part of that, basically one winner, one donator will be chosen at random to win the Perfect Grade Astray. So that's a big prize. That's something to be excited about. But also we got some kits here, not really kits, kind of little resin figures from our friend uh, Win, GBWC winner and just all around awesome guy, donated some of these figures there for the contest. There's six of them, so six winners will also get those little mini busts. Those are for like your uh, SD Gundam heads to put on there. Really cool. Uh, they're awesome. So there's some cool stuff to win and it's all for a really good cause. So check out the link to that down below. The next point of news is just related to a contest I was invited to judge. So this is uh, Damien from Argentina invited me to judge a contest for their group called Aces de Zion. So if you're living in Argentina, maybe a few of you who are watching this video, uh, check out the link to that. I'll put the link to their Facebook page down below. There's a contest going on uh, for those of you guys in Argentina, and I'll be one of the judges for that. I'm not going to Argentina, just virtually. I'll be checking the entries and helping to choose the winners for that. So check that out if you're in Aust uh, Argentina. And then a couple things about Gundam stuff that was announced. Mobile Gundam, Narrative, and Godzilla have a collaboration in the form of a clear file folder that you can get if you attend the screening. Uh, both of those are premiering in November, so just as a kind of cross-promotion, they're giving away these uh, clear file folders for people who reserve tickets to the screenings in Japan. So outside of Japan, you're going to have to get one through like a third-party a uh, proxy seller or some kind of like eBay or something like that, Japan auction site. But that's pretty cool. Uh, and then the other point of news here is that it was announced at New York Comic Con that there will be an English dubbing of Gonna Build Divers on the way. We don't have an exact date of when that's going to be coming yet, but for those of you guys who like English dubbing, that'll be coming out in the future. They also announced that there will be a screening of the first 20 minutes of Gundam Narrative at uh, Anime uh, New York City on uh, November 16th through 18th. So if you want to check that out, that'll be playing there. All right, so let's get into all of the announcements because there's a whole lot of them. Uh, I'm just scrolling down the list. 
And yeah, there's a lot of these to get through. So let's go. First off, starting with some figure stuff. Uh, Metal Build Crossbone Gundam X1 is going to be out in January for 22,000 yen. This was teased before, so it's not exactly news, but we're getting a whole bunch of images of this. It looks really cool. Uh, and it's a shame that all the Ch Chinese bootleg companies are getting put out of business because it would be really cool to get a kit version of this. Uh, but yeah, it does look pretty cool. I like the like the parrot robot thing. I guess that's probably from the manga. I haven't read the manga, but I would imagine that's what that is originally from. The cape looks really cool too. It looks cool how the cape looks like under like the cloth part. They've probably got like some guide wires that will allow you to shape the cape how you want because you can see like these little like gold bits on there. It looks like those are probably like little clips uh, clipping the cape, the uh, cloth part onto like a wire or something that will allow you to shape that. So that looks really cool. Uh, and just everything else, of course, it has all the gimmicks of the crossbow. It has the knives in the feet and the knives in the back of the leg. It has the effect parts, like the X part for like it's punching thing for what it's called. And all that fun stuff. I can only assume that there's going to be multiple versions of this coming out later on down the line. A full cloth version or an X2 or an X3 or whatever else. So those of you guys who are Metal Build fans... Uh, there'll be plenty of options for you to spend your money on, I'm sure. Next, in the Metal Robot Damashi Ka Signature line, we have the Zeta Plus C1 Sigmund Shade version. So, basically, as far as I can tell, this is just, like, has different markings from the regular uh, Zeta Plus C1 that came out not too long ago. This one is going to be out in February for 15,000 yen. On the plus side, if you missed picking this up before, it's another chance to get this one now with different markings on it. Uh, but yeah, there's that. does look really nice, though. Fantastic looking figure, to be sure. Uh, Robot Damashi Zaku 2 High Mobility Type Black TriStar version, uh, anime version. So the anime version line of Robot Damashi figures continues here with the Black TriStar uh, High Mobility Type Zaku out in January for 6,000 yen. Also, Robot Damashi Nightingale is out in February for 22,000 yen. Uh, very high price, but of course it's the Nightingale. It's a very big, elaborate design and Robot Damashi figure uh, will be undoubtedly quite large as well. The Robot Damashi, I think, are usually around similar to 1144 scale, so it's going to be pretty big. Yeah, and it does look really nice, for sure, and the stand looks really cool as well for that. I mean, it all, all looks quite good, but it is a lot of money. All right, into the Exceed stuff. So Exceed model Zaku Head Volume 6 is out in November for uh, 500 yen each for these. But I think like if you get them through other sites like Hobby Link Japan, for example, they usually sell them in sets of four. So it'd be around 20 bucks for a set of four of these. Very well worth the price, in my opinion. But uh, set six is including Shars Zaku 2, uh, Zaku 2 Type F, and the, a Zaku 2 Clear, which it does look pretty cool. Now, uh, as I mentioned before, I really wish that they would actually have some physical variations in these basically the only variations that they have is the v is not the v-fin the antenna on the head they have one without an antenna one with an antenna and one with a different type of antenna and that's basically otherwise it's just color differences i wish we would see more variations in the actual design of these but good news is that we have finally the exceed model gundam heads also coming out volume one of the gundam heads is out in january uh, again for 500 yen each finally after this was teased Oh, uh, it had to be like quite a while ago, maybe almost a year ago. I don't know when exactly, but it's been a long time. So, of course, Volume 1 has to include the RX-782, but they've also got the Gundam G3 and the Full Armor Gundam. So, a pretty cool set of those. Definitely looking forward to getting those uh, out in January. Yeah, so I'll get those and I'll do a review for you guys. We'll check out one of those. Uh, and then, on to Converge stuff. Converge Series 13 is out in December for 5,400 yen. That's for a box of 10 of them, if you buy them in a box of 10, as I usually do. Uh, this one is including the Crossbone Gundam X1, the Crossbone Gundam X2 Kai, the Talgis 3, the Shinandu Stein narrative version, and the Full Armor Gundam, and the Dom. Uh, a few of those, I believe, have been released in Converge form before. I believe there's already a Converge figure of the Full Armor Gundam and the Dom. And possibly the Crossbone Gundam X1. But regardless, uh, these are a little bit different, I think. Either way, they look really awesome, as always. Uh, into Converge EX series. Converge EX25 has been announced to be another Crossbone. This one is Crossbone uh, Gundam Full Cloth. Crossbone Gundam X1. Full Cloth. Uh, and this one is out in uh, January for 2,700 yen. So, 
uh, 25 bucks or something for this, but it does look pretty cool. Uh, of course, it has the Peacock Smasher, the big sword with the effect parts, the claw, the full claw thing, of course, they're on there. It has this custom stand with a whole skull-shaped stand and everything, of course, has to have that. It has even the knives coming out the bottom of the feet, too, as an option part you can use for that. So, really cool set. Looking forward to that, to add that to my Converge collection. And then also there's a P Bandai Converge Core Crossbone Gundam X3 out in January for 2200 yen. This one is slightly cheaper uh, because I think it's coming with just a little bit less in terms of the actual plastic. It doesn't have the elaborate full cloth. And it does have a cloth. It does have like just the regular black cape. Now, originally when I saw this and I saw the photos of it, I thought that it comes with uh, actually three of the capes because it shows this picture here with the X1, X2, and X3 all wearing the cape. But actually now what I think it is, it just comes with one cape and they're just showing off the fact that you can use that cape for either the X1 or the X2 that are included in uh, Series 13. So it only comes with one cape, I'm gonna guess, just based on the price. And so you can choose if you wanna use that here with the X3 or if you get Series 13, you have the option of using that cape for the X1 or the X2 Kai as well. So that's pretty cool. And then one more P-Bandai Converge Core thing here is the Neo Xeong full set metallic coating version. So basically it's just the uh, Neo Xeong, which I have done a review on in the past. So you can check that out if you're interested to see more about this. But it's just got the full metallic coating, which does look pretty nice. It's very shiny. Uh, and then, it, of course, it has the ring. It's like the Psycho Shard effect part thing like that that you could get. That was a Peep Bandai thing for the HG release. But in this case, yeah, uh, this is coming with the Peep Bandai version. So this is coming out in January as well for 7,000 yen. So very, very pricey. Anything plated or coated from Bandai is always going to be uh, almost double the price in most cases. And that is seems to be the case with this one as well. So that does look pretty nice though. Moving on to Gundam G-Frame. Also Gundam G-Frame Volume 4 is out in December. Uh, again, for 500 yen each of these so that would be 500 yen for the frame and then 500 yen for like the armor set so total 1000 yen if you want like the full package for any one of these so this is including the narrative gundam it would be equipment the banshee destroy mode and shars gelgoog so we'll, actually the regular unicorn already came out in the g-frame line so you can pretty much get an idea of how that's going to be the shars gelgoog if it's anything like the g-frame dom the g-frame dom is actually probably my favorite of the series so far that i've checked out so that's good news and then the narrative gundam b equipment now this is really telling because the hg that we're getting of the narrative gundam is labeled as a equipment so this b equipment version with some different stuff it's got like some funnels or something on it anyway i forget exactly but uh this different equipment is possibly hinting that maybe we're going to be getting a different version of the HG as well. We don't know yet, but just because of the fact that we we don't know what actually is all the narrative Gundam has in the series because we haven't seen the movie yet, uh, but just the fact that we know that it does also have B equipment means that we could get a different version of the HG as well if that ever comes out or if it ends up being a P-Bandai kit or something, we don't know, but... Uh, it's interesting to see that, so we'll have to see if that ever comes out in HG form. Uh, into some P-Bandai G-Frame stuff, there's a P-Bandai G-Frame S slash XS Gundam out in January for 4,500 yen, pretty pricey for that. Uh, it does give you the option parts to either make the S Gundam or the XS Gundam, but man, the proportions of that look pretty awful in the G-Frame line. There's all sorts of different versions of the S Gundam and XS Gundam in like Converge form and Standart and there's different versions of the Standart and like Assault Kingdom and all this different kind of candy toys. This one, I've got to say, probably looks the worst though. The proportions just look awful. When it's like in an action pose, it looks maybe passable, but standing, it looks pretty bad. Uh, and then the P-Bandai G-Frame Unicorn Gundam 03 Phoenix Destroy Mode narrative version. So Bandai is really pushing these narrative versions out in every single line, any which way they can, of the Shinanju Stein and the Phoenix and everything. So they are really making a push for all this stuff. And so this one's out in January as well for 3,500 yen. Uh, 1,000 yen less than the excess because it doesn't have the option parts of making two different kits basically so yeah it does look pretty nice though uh, the proportions don't look quite as bad on this one uh, but again we've seen the unicorn so you can get an idea of how that's going to be basically probably a little bit better quality because it's a, a special release being a P Bandai item but still hmm and the last thing here as far as figures and stuff is the P Bandai Mobile Suit Ensemble EX09 Gundam TR6 inlay out in January for a massive 15,000 yen, that's right, $150 for this 
candy toy, if, if you can still call it that at this point. But yeah, uh, it's huge though. It's very, very large. You can see the measurements in this. It's something like 40 centimeters long or something like that, or like that's when it's extended out. Anyway, it's gigantic. Uh, but that's still, that's a hefty price for this. I love Advance of Zeta, but nowhere near that much. That is pretty cool. I, I mean, it does look really awesome, and I would love if we actually got like an HD kit of this, which would also be quite large and very expensive, but I would definitely pay for an HD kit for that, no question about it. But anyway, now moving on to Gunpla stuff, and there's a lot. Let's first start, uh, start off with taking a look at some Gundam base limited stuff here. This is, the first one is HUC Sazabi and New Gundam Special Coding Set. So this is going to be out in uh, September, sorry, this already came out in September, so this is available now. Uh, for 10,000 yen for this. Again, anything special coding is going to be very pricey. The new Gundam and the Sazabi are both pretty old in the HGUC line, and so I imagine the nub marks on those are going to be pretty terrible. Uh, but, I mean, they do look shiny, anyway. And they do come with that special stand for being able to pose them on the same stand together. Next thing is the Gundam Base Limited HGUC Hyakushiki Gold Coding version. So, again, pretty expensive at uh, 4,000 yen. This one is out this month in October. Uh, and it, I'm really surprised that it took them this long to release a gold-plated Hyakushiki. Uh, it's the, the revived Hyakushiki, of course, number 200 in the HGUC line. And I was trying to think, didn't they release one as like a P-band item or like a ex Expo exclusive? And I, I couldn't remember, not that I'm aware of. So I think this is actually the first time they have finally gotten around to making a gold-plated version of the HGUC Revive Hyakushiki. So there you go. Pretty cool. It's quite expensive. But if you don't have the means uh, to plate uh, a HD kit by yourself, then there you go. Next thing is the Gundam Base Limited HGUC prepare for an extremely long title here. HGUC Unicorn Gundam 03 Phoenix Narrative Version Clear Color Destroy Mode out this month for uh, 3,000 yen. So despite having an extremely ridiculously long name, uh, the price isn't that bad. 3,000 yen for this is, uh, yeah, just a clear color version of the narrative version destroy mode of the Phoenix. It actually doesn't look half bad. Clear color kits, I'm usually not really for, but this one doesn't actually look too bad. Uh, next thing is the last one from the Gundam Base Limited uh, lineup here. We've got the HGUC Unicorn Gundam Perfectibility Destroy Mode. So basically this is like the Plan B Unicorn, essentially. It's like all the different Unicorn equipment on there. It's got the Armed Armor VN, the Armed Armor BS, the DE, the XC. Uh, it's got the beam Hyper Beam Javelin, and it's all in white with blue psycho frame. And... Yeah, looks pretty cool. And that is out. Uh, that just also recently came out for 3,500 yen for that one. So again, not really a bad price considering all that you're getting in there. So that's pretty cool. All right, now getting into the P-Bandai stuff and there is quite a lot of this as well. All right, so the first thing is the P-Bandai Hi-Rez Wing Gundam EW out in February for 13,500 yen. Um, I just recently did a review of the Wing Gundam Zero EW in the Hi-Rez line and not so great of a kit. I have to imagine this one is going to be pretty much the same. They have announced like some small improvements to it basically. Uh, one thing that they mentioned was that they improved the wrist joint of that so hopefully that'll be a little bit more stable for holding up the gigantic rifle that it has. Uh, also this is actually including water slide decals too so that's good. Uh, but yeah I don't know this 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 version of the wing gun I think doesn't look as good uh, with the high-res styling of it, the that really sharp, jagged uh, high-res styling that they did. For the Wing Gundam Zero EW, I thought it, it worked pretty well, and I, I thought it looked nice. This one I don't really like quite as much. I just prefer the look of the Master Grade version of it, I think. Uh, and for costing basically three or four or times the cost of the Master Grade, I think the Master Grade is still probably going to be the best bet for that. But anyway, that'll be out in February. There is also the P-Bandai Perfect grade Gundam Exia clear parts set out in December for 3,500 yen. That's nice, relatively cheap. 3,500 yen is not bad for just a set of armor for the Exia. So if you already have the Exia, especially if you already have like the uh, full lighting mode Exia, all the LED set and everything, you can get this armor set and then throw some clear armor on there. And you don't have to use all the clear armor. You can maybe just throw it on some parts where you want it and you know, like, pick and choose and that should look pretty nice. Uh, and then the next thing here is the P-Bandai Master Grade Sazabi Verka Special Coding version out in December for 18,000 yen. Again, this, this is like another case where the cost of the kit is basically almost doubled by the fact that it is special coded. Now, uh, and I'm usually not really for these special coding versions because it's just kind of 
this kind of thing. If you can paint, you can pretty much do the same thing by yourself uh, with a little bit of effort. But uh, I have seen this in person on display, and it does look pretty nice, I have to say. So maybe if, again, if you don't have the means to paint it by yourself, or if you just can't be bothered, if you feel like it's a lot of money, but you would rather just pay that money than have to go through the effort of painting it yourself, I do have to say, it does look really nice in person, so it's a pretty cool looking kit. Uh, next thing here is the Master Grade P, uh, P Bandai, Master Grade Kubelet Damned out in November for 5,400 yen. Really looking forward to this. This is basically based off of a design, uh, a special like custom kit that Naoki did. Uh, when was that? A year or two ago? Something like that. It's been quite a while. Uh, but it's based off of that with a little bit of changes, updates added to that. And I think it looks really cool. It's basically just a Kubelet with a whole bunch of, actually quite a lot of new parts Modified that. Obviously, the biggest new feature is the big gigantic hands, but also the head is different, the backpack's different, the feet are different, uh, and it looks pretty awesome. So I'm looking forward to that one quite a bit. Uh, on the other hand, the P Bandai Master Grade Hai Jin Shiki uh, is going to be coming out for 5,800 yen, but we don't have a release date set for that yet. I would assume probably December or around the same time as the Kubelet Damned because they were kind of displayed together. Uh, recently. This one I'm not as into. It's just kind of very weird proportions for the Hyakushiki. It's got an extended waist. Uh, the shoulders are like extra huge and it's just very stylized. And while the styling I think works for the Kubelet, not so much for the Hyakushiki in my personal opinion. I'm just not into it. It almost looks like something, if you're like a, a big fan of five star stores or something, then you might be more into this because it's a little bit reminiscent of that. I'm not exactly sure who was the designer behind that one. If it was also Naoki or not, I have a feeling that maybe it was a different designer behind this one. If you guys know, leave a comment down below and let me know. I, I haven't seen about this, so I'm not sure. Next thing here is the P Bandai Master Grade Gundam F91 Back Cannon and Twin VSBR Type version 2.0. So this is a another version of the Master Grade F91 2.0 kit uh, out in December, out in November, sorry, for 5,800 yen. And this one basically comes with two, it's like all the same kit as the regular kit, I'm sure. And then it comes with two other different options for extra armaments. So you got the uh, the back cannon, which looks really cool. It's these big, huge cannons. They have like the missile launchers in there as well. And like the, uh, like extend the barrels of the gun, like extend out. It looks really cool. All the details about that. And the twin VSBR also looks really cool just because of the backpack on this. And we talked about this, uh, for a little bit in the last episode of Gunpla News, uh, last episode of Gunpla Talk. Sorry. So check that out. Uh, if you missed that, uh, and all the wires and everything on the backpack is just something so unique. We just don't really see anything like that in Gunpla really. Uh, and so I, you know, I, I talked about before that I'm just not really that big of a fan of the design of the Gundam F91 in general, but if it, if there's any version of the F91 that I really like, I really like these a lot more than the just the regular standard F91. So I definitely, I, I was on the fence. I finally decided to get this because what I was thinking is that it's just a shame that this kit comes with two really awesome backpacks and you have to choose which one you want. But if you already have the regular F91, then you can just give one of these cool backpacks to the F91 that you already have, and then with the new kit that you've got here, you can use the other backpack. So I think that's what I'm gonna do with mine, and I'll probably just do make one in the regular colors and then paint one in the Harrison colors. And there you go. That is the uh, probably a good way to utilize this kit if you do plan on getting it, and that's what my idea was for it. And this, uh, this kit I think also is coming with some water slide decals as well, so that's cool. Probably not gonna be very extensive, just like the main markings probably, but it's something. Next thing here is the P Bandai Master Grade V2 Assault Buster Gundam. Again, this one, we don't have a release date set for it yet, but we do have the price of 7,000 yen. Uh, but you can, this is that's the, the Gundam and all of the Assault Buster stuff and the Wings of Light effect parts for that. So that's pretty cool. That was previously sold as a separate uh, P Bandai item, but now you get it together with this set, it looks like. Alternatively, if you already have the V2 Gundam and you don't want to buy a second one, you can just get the equipment set just on its own for 2,700 uh, 2, yen, which is which is pretty nice. Bandai doesn't always do that, but it's nice when they do because some people don't want to buy the full kit again if they already bought it. So it's nice to be able to just buy the equipment set. Um, I really love the Assault Buster Gundam, the V2 Assault Buster Gundam, just in terms of its design. Um, and I really was hoping that they would have done this, but... Uh, now that I see it, I just, I'm not really as excited about it just because I really was so displeased with the V2 gun and how it's just basically like a brick and you can't really do any sort of like cool posing with it without modifying it. I understand that it's all part of the 
they had to fit the transformation gimmick in there. And some people would prefer the fact that it's able to fully transform. Personally, I don't care about the transformation at all. So I would have loved for it to be more articulated. But again, don't want to relitigate all of that. Basically, my point is that I won't be getting this set, uh, but it does look pretty cool. I, I built and painted the HD version of this a couple years back, and I loved it. I would, if it came down to it, I would rather just get another, another kit of the HD before getting this one, if it was me personally. The HD is a really nice kit. Moving on, the P Bandai Master Grade GNX3 ESF type. This is out in December for 4,300 yen. This is just basically another version of the Master Grade GNX. Uh, I know the GNX3 is a popular version for those of you guys who are GNX fans, so that'll be coming out in December. And then the last couple P Bandai Master Grades here are two different versions of the Zaku 2 F2. One of them is the Kinbarid Forces that owns out in November for 3,600 yen, and then the Nguyen Bitter use custom version that one is also out in November for 3600 yen. Now if these would have been using the Zaku 2 uh, 2.0 master grade kit as the base so basically we don't have a 2.0 version of the Gundam of the Zaku F2 yet uh, and really hoping that we do eventually someday if this would have been uh, a 2.0 version of the F2 I would have been all over this but unfortunately it's not this is just the same old old and it's emphasis on the old uh, master grade F2 that they've just done a little bit of recoloring on and I think there's like a couple new parts in there but not really much it's mostly just recoloring and the fact that it does come with a big sheet of water slides which is nice there's a whole bunch of water slides on there for just all sorts of markings and all sorts of stuff on there so that's probably like the best point about buying this basically if you wanted a master grade Zaku 2 F2 and you don't mind the fact that it's an older kit this is a great opportunity for you to just pick one of those up and also get a big sheet of decals included with that. So there you go. There's that. All right, P Bandai RG Wing Gundam Zero EW Clear Color. This is part of Bandai's uh, thing that they're doing now of taking some of the items that were uh, previously just sold only at the Gundam base in Tokyo and then selling them as P Bandai items. So like, it, I think it's basically for like people in Japan who live outside of Tokyo who want to be able to buy this stuff they're able to get this now through the P Bandai online store. And for those of us outside of Japan, we're also able to get it now, but it's pretty much the same thing. You have to buy it through a third party seller. So whether you're buying that through a third party seller from Gundam Base Tokyo or P Bandai online, it's not really gonna make much of a difference for us. But anyway, this is going to be more readily available, slightly more readily available uh, now in January for 2,700 yen. Uh, there's a, there'll be a few more of those similar to that that we'll talk about in this episode. So we'll get to that again later. P Bandai RG Tall Geese 2 is coming out in December for 2700 yen. Not much of a surprise here. We didn't really know which versions of the Tall Geese would come out as P Bandai or not. It looks like the uh, Tall Geese 2 at least is going to be P Bandai. Uh, as for the Tall Geese 3, we'll still have to wait and see. They might go the same route they did with the Master Grade and make the 2 and the 3 both P Bandai kits. Uh, hopefully they make the Tall Geese 3 as just a standard release. Although I'm not sure... We'll just have to wait and see on that. Anyway, the Tall Geese 2 does look cool. It's, for the most part, just a recolor. There's a few new parts there included. It looks like even new parts included for like the holding hands like that, for holding on the top of the Dauber gun. So new parts in there, uh, a few of those. You also have a new pilot figure for Trey's Kushinada included with that, which is pretty cool. Uh, then the uh, HG stuff, P Bandai HG GNX. Four Commander type out in December for 2200 yen. Again, just another variation of the HGGNX. The thing that I do like about this is that it comes with the uh, GM bazookas, which are really cool. It comes with two of them, and that's a pretty cool thing. The uh, the Build Fighters version of the GNX4 that came out before did not come with those, unfortunately, but it looks like pretty much the same kit, just recolored to like black and dark gray, and now it also comes with those bazookas as well. So co cool new accessory to be included with those. Uh, gives you a little bit more motivation to want to buy that. Uh, next thing is the P Bandai HGUC Gaz L and Gaz R set. We don't have a release date set for this, but the list price is 3,500 yen. That sounds about right. It's basically just two kits of the Galbaldi Beta and then the new parts included there for uh, the special parts for the Gaz L and the Gaz R, the extended shoulder parts. Thing the head is a little bit different. It has an, a commander antenna on it, uh, and then of course their weapons, the lances, and different uh, parts for the arm as well. Anyway, so. And they do have that like decorative gold trim on there, which looks like it's just going to be just plain stickers. It's pretty rare for Bandai to include water slides uh, in an HD release of a P Bandai kit. So those are just going to be stickers on there, unfortunately. But for those of you guys who are fans of the Gazelle and Gazar, those will be coming out soon. My fingers are crossed that someday we'll get 
a kit uh, in the HG line or possibly RE line of the Gamalk, but we'll just have to wait and see. Anyway, the P Bandai HGC Jesta, we got a couple of these coming out from Gundam Narrative. There is the Shezar Type uh, Team A that's coming out in November for 2800 yen. This basically comes with like the Stark Jagan backpack and then the unicorn, the full armor unicorn's big fuel tanks. Now, for some strange reason, all the photos of the kit show it with two fuel tanks, but then it, when it shows like the picture of all the accessories included, it comes with three fuel tanks. So I'm not exactly sure why. I'm guessing there's some reason for that that we just maybe don't know yet, or maybe just I don't know yet, but for whatever reason, it comes with three fuel tanks. Uh, and yeah, 2,800 yen for that. Now keep that in mind as we look at the next one here. This is uh, HGC Jesta Shiraz type team B and C. So also out in November for 2,200 yen. So this is like the same thing, but this one comes with this huge like tripod mega cannon and also the capture gun, which is like this pretty cool new weapon for that. Now this one seems like it has more new plastic included with it, but this one costs less. So I'm not exactly sure what's going on with that, but whatever the case is, in total, you're, if you want both of those, uh, it's gonna be around 5,000 yen for the two sets of those, which is not too bad. Uh, I'm planning on getting those, they do look really cool. Uh, the HGUC Jesta is a really nice kit and I love the new parts for this. The new head parts, like with the like, fold down camera on there, is really cool, I like that a lot. And then the P Bandai HGUC Jagan D Type Escort Team Custom uh, coming out for 1800 yen. Again, we don't have a release date set for this yet at the moment. But when we when we first saw this announced, I thought that this was a the first P Bandai variant that we're seeing of the Master Grade, which so far we've yet to see. I haven't seen any P Bandai versions of the Master Grade Jagan out uh, or announced yet. But this is just just another in the very long list of HGUC Jagan uh, variants coming out in the P Bandai series. So this one does look pretty cool though. Cool new weapon, cool new chest parts. I like that a lot. And of course the head is kind of very similar to the head that came out with the Gurns back uh, from Full Metal Alchemist. Full Metal Panic, I should say, sorry. But anyway, I do really like this version of the Jagan. It's pretty cool. I'm not exactly sure what that's from. I'm guessing it's also from Gundam Narrative as well uh, because I just have never seen it before, but it does look pretty cool. And finally, the last P-Bandai item here is the P-Bandai HG, the origin, Jim Cannon. This is out in December for 1800 and they're not exactly a new thing because we've known this is coming out, but we finally got the news that it is going to be confirmed as a P-Bandai item and not as a standard release. So there you go. It's going to be P-Bandai, and it seems like basically Bandai took their four different variants of the origin Jim and made two standard release and two B-Bandai. So not bad. Of course, we wish they would all be standard release, but... That is how it ended up coming out. So there you go. Moving on into just the standard release stuff. Now the big news for the big PG out in December is the PG 00 Gundam Seven Swords G. Uh, I don't know. That's out in December for 23,000 yen. It's just not really all that exciting. For people who are big fans of the 00 Gundam and especially this particular variant of the 00 Gundam, maybe it's a little bit more exciting, but for me, I don't know, it just doesn't really look that exciting and it's very expensive and it doesn't really look that detailed. Of course, the perfect grades are more complicated to build, but if I really wanted a 00 Gundam 7 Swords G, I just don't really see why I wouldn't just get the master grade if this is me. Of course, this the perfect grade's bigger and more complicated and much more expensive, but honestly, the master grade just looks nicer in my opinion. So I don't know, just not really all that exciting release for a perfect grade. It's just basically a, a cash grab I think on Bandai's part they need to collect some funds hopefully that means they need to collect some funds for something more new and more exciting out in the future uh, but either way it's just a kind of way to just make some quick cash on Bandai's part unfortunately so anyway for those of you who, who are into that then by all means uh, I mean I'm sure it's going to be a nice kit uh, no doubt about that but it just doesn't really seem like the most exciting thing for for me anyway and I imagine for a good amount of you guys as well in a similar vein, here we have the Master Grade Shinanju Stein narrative version. Uh, we don't have a release date or price set for this yet, but I, if I remember correctly, the H, the uh, Shinanju Stein Verka, I think, was around 7,000 yen, so I'd imagine this is probably similar to that. Uh, this was in a little bit darker gray color, and then it has some new parts, of course, there for the accessories. The weapons are a little bit different, uh, and of course, it has the sleeves parts for that as well. So that's going to be really cool. Um, and this is not a Verka from what I've seen so far, so that means it's probably not going to be including any water slide decals, unfortunately. Fingers crossed that it will, but uh, that does make a difference whether they tag on the Verka 
line or not. And then again, in a similar vein, here is the Master Grade XS or S Gundam. Anyway, this one, we don't have a price or release date set for this one yet either. And again, it looks like a, basically a cash grab because it's not really like a 2.0 Master Grade. It's basically like a 1.5 version where it's like mostly the same Master Grade S or XS Gundam kit with some new parts in there. Basically some new parts that were used for the Deep Striker, new chest and shoulder parts. And it looks like maybe it's got some new hand parts on here as well. But for the most part, the kit looks pretty much the same. But based on the very little information that we have of this so far, it looks like this is going to be released uh, possibly as a set where you have the option of building either the S Gundam or the XS Gundam. So that's going to be nice. So this should be an interesting kit when it comes out. I'm not really having my hopes up for anything too new and crazy about it. If you've built either the S or the XS Gundam Master Grade kits before, probably not going to be anything too new or exciting about it. And it's a very big and complicated kit, expensive kit. So I'm sure this is going to be close to the 8,000, 9,000 range price for this. But either way, I love the XS Gundam, and so any love for anything Sentinel is always fine in my book. Alright, and then we got the announcement for the next in the RE100 line, and I was actually really quite surprised and pretty excited about this one. This is the Gun Easy, coming out in December for 3500 yen. Uh, being from Victory, it's going to be quite small in scale, so uh, that is going to be kind of similar to the RE100 Vignagina, which came out recently. It was also a pretty small one. Uh, so while we generally think the RE100 line is reserved for kits that are pretty big and for the most part most of them have been pretty large in scale like the Yakudoga which came out recently as well, the Hamahama, the Nightingale of course obviously, and the GPO4 even to an extent is a kind of large size Gundam. But then on the other hand they have done a couple of these more smaller ones as well so kind of interesting. But this does look really nice. It, I, I like the design of the Gun Easy. It's a pretty cool looking grunt suit, sort of similar to the Jagan and it's kind of styling and coloring, very simplistic, but it does look nice and it comes with some cool accessories and everything on there. So I'm quite looking forward to that. We also got an announcement of the next real grade and it's all again, not really all that exciting and it's pretty predictable. It was the RG Full Armor Unicorn Gundam uh, that's out in December for 5,500 yen. So a lot of stuff coming out in December. Uh, and so it's gonna be a pretty busy month. And so yeah, I, when I say this is not very exciting I mean that uh, It's not something really super new Everyone knew that the full armor unicorn gun was gonna be coming out in the RG line at some point It's cool that it's gonna be a standard release and not a P Bandai item So that's good and it's a fantastic kit the RG unicorn is is one of the best real grades out um, so it will be a really great kit and really cool, but I know a lot of people have unicorn fatigue and they're just kind of tired of all the unicorn variants, understandably, so I can imagine there'll be a fair amount of disinterest in this release as well. But I, I love the unicorn, so I'm a little bit excited about it, but again, it's just not really something really super new. But as we move on into the HGUC line, we do have some very new and very cool stuff coming out on the HGUC line. Uh, the HGUC line has just been really killing it lately. They've been doing a lot of really cool stuff, and the kits are really super top quality. Uh, so man, it's been really doing really well. Uh, coming out in December for 1800 yen, we've got the DJ. So of course the DJ we had out in the RE100 line, that was, uh, it's been a few years ago now at this point, but the DJ is coming out in the HGUC line, and it looks pretty quality. Uh, I'm not really a big, huge fan of the DJ, uh, but the quality of this kit does look really nice, and I'm sure it's going to be pretty solid. Uh, then also is going to be the HGUC R Jarja. This one is out in January for 1800 yen as well. This is something that I think was pretty predictable after the release of the R Gyaga in the HD Build Fighters line, but it really took them quite a while to get around to making the R Jarja. Don't know why it took them so long, but it's finally coming out and it looks really cool, so I'm looking forward to that for sure. And then one more HGUC here is the Gustav Carl. This is another design that I've been waiting for for such a long time. After its brief but very cool short appearance in Gum Unicorn, I was really hoping we would get a kit of this because it's a really cool design. It's basically like a super bulked out Jesta sort of in its kind of styling. Uh, but yeah, we're finally getting a kit of that in February for 2400 yen, so a little bit more expensive, but with it being a pretty big bulky mobile suit, you can kind of see probably where that price is going to be coming into play. A lot of plastic in this kit, so I'm looking forward to that. Very cool. Finally going to have a kit of the Gustav Carl. That's great. Bandai, again, like I said, they're just checking all this stuff off the list. All the stuff that I never thought I would see. Wound Warts, the Master Grade Hazel, the Deep Striker Master Grade, all the stuff that's been coming out lately, all the different versions of the Ifrit that they've been doing as well. And like all these cool designs that they're finally getting around to making. Uh, if you're a UC fan, Bandai's been doing you pretty well lately. But then, of course, moving on to Gundam Build Divers, where we have plenty of new stuff coming out. 
So the first thing is the HD Build Divers GBN Garda Frame out in November for 1600 yen. This basically looks like the Build Fighter Build Divers version of the uh, Gym Gym, which was a Build Fighters kit. Uh, basically, they want to make just like something very simple and like a grunt sort of suit special to the series. That's just a really simple thing with some different head options for that, as this one does also as well. It has a canopy head, and I think it's like a full face head or something like that, if I remember correctly. It's called something like that. But yeah, very simple, and I'm sure we'll see some really cool customs of this kit coming out. Uh, I, li I like it. Some people are not really into some things. Actually, I don't really like either of the heads, to be honest. So I'll definitely probably want to swap that with maybe one of the leftover heads from the Gym Gym. Uh, that would be a good chance to use one of those. But overall, I think it does look pretty cool. Next is the HD Build Divers Mobile Doll Sarah out in December for 2400 yen. Now, I've got some thoughts on this. It does look pretty cool. I mean, just as a design and as a kit, I think it'll be pretty interesting. It's got some different face options. It's got, like, the actual human face, and then it has the robot face. So if you kind of prefer one or the other, you can have your choice on that. And that all looks great. Now, what I want to talk about is the fact that this is coming out in the HD, HD line and not... The figureized line. So recently, the build, uh, the diver Nami kit came out in the figureized line, uh, also for the same price point, twenty four hundred yen. Keep that in mind. The same price point as all the different Fumina and all those different kits that came out in the HG line before. So it's kind of interesting how they're bouncing around between uh, the Nami kit is figureized standard, but now we're back to HG for this mobile doll Sarah. And so I don't know about how the quality of this is. This is going to be. Uh, the same quality that we saw with the Nami kit or if it's going to be back down a little bit down a notch in quality to comparable to like the Fumia kits I don't know but it's interesting Bandai just really can't seem to figure out their Mecha Musume kits it seems next thing is the HD Build Divers Gundam Shining Break uh, this is a pretty interesting design I, I think I like it I'm not really sure but I, I think this is something that I'm kind of excited about this is out in December for 1800 yen uh, and this like transforms as a pretty goofy, simple transformation, not really all that exciting. But the Gundam itself does look like a pretty interesting mix of different aesthetics uh, from different Gundams. And yeah, it looks like a pretty nicely detailed and pretty nice HG kit, so I'm, I'm a little bit excited about that one. But on the other hand, we have the HG Build Divers GBN Base Gundam out in January for a 1600 and this one... Eh, not so much about that. You know, we've seen different versions of the kind of different series take on the RX-782 Gundam over the years. And I think, like, for example, in Double O, they had the O Gundam, which is basically, like, a different take on the RX-782 Gundam in terms of its styling, which I thought that looks great. I really like that design as well. This one, not so much. I'm not really feeling this one so much. The design just looks a little bit weird uh, and not in a good way. So, and it also looks like it's going to be molded in, like, the same kind of colors and plastic like the Double uh, O Sky Higher Than Sky Phase kit or it's like really bright neon colors, and then the white is in like a molded, gloss-injected white, uh, kind of pearl white kind of plastic, which is, you either like it or don't, but we'll have to see. Maybe once we see some more photos of that, I'll be a little bit more interested, but from what we've seen, just photos from uh, events so far, not really too interesting. But again, switching back to the other hand, HG Build Divers Gundam uh, Zerachiel. Seems like Bandai's trying to make a new angel for the Evangelians to battle or something here with that name, but this one's out in February for 2700 yen, a little bit more pricey. This is based off of the HG Harut, uh, which is a design that I quite like, so I like this new take on the design. It's pretty cool. I like the new head of it. It's very kind of strange, but really cool. I like the new interpretation of that. The new color is pretty cool, like blue and white, kind of gray colors. It's a pretty cool new color scheme for that as well. The orange is very eye-catching, of course, of the Harut, but this one also looks pretty interesting, so I'm quite excited about this one as well, to be honest. Then we had a few things here announced that we don't have either the price or the release date set for these yet either, uh, but we I'll just show them to you for the moment. This is the HD Gundam 00 Sky Heavy Weapon System Trans Am Infinity Mode, so it's basically like in kind of Trans Am colors, but a little bit like darker Trans Am colors, and it has all these new parts for the Heavy Weapon System parts for that. It's basically like these like missile pods and cannons and stuff added on there, so if you wanted a more heavy-duty version of the uh, HG Gundam 00 Sky, that'll be coming out, as well as the HD Build Divers Gundam Age 2 Magnum SV version. This one is just uh, change the colors, again, uh, in just kind of like a white and grayish kind of color scheme, and this has a couple new parts for the back of the legs and the backpack, which do look pretty interesting. Uh, and then there's also going to be the HD Build Custom 
heavy weapon system, uh, HWS, and SV custom set. So basically, this is taking those new extra parts from the new version of the Double O Sky and the H2 Magnum, and then putting these into a part set that you can just buy just by itself, and then it has like a new kind of part, like ship part for those to be able to like be attached onto. So basically, if you already have the Double O Sky and or the H2 Magnum and you just want the new parts, you don't want to buy the full new kit, you can get this build custom set and you can do that. So that's pretty cool. I like that because I do like the look of some of those new parts and I might want to use some of those on the kits that I already have. So I'll be looking forward to checking out that uh, build custom set. And then there's going to be a new SD Build Divers RX Zero Morrow. This is the uh, Crime Crystal version, basically like the kind of green psycho shard crystal psycho crystal shard thing that the unicorn did in the last episode uh in the rx zero maro kit here anyway i didn't have any interest in the original version of this and i still don't have any interest in this version of it but if you were interested this is out in january for 1800 yen uh, and then we have another care guy coming out i thought this line was dead but apparently not hg poochie guy hg petite guy whatever you want to call it Kara guy Aya Fujisawa is uh, coming out in the future. We don't have a price or release date set for this one, but it looks pretty cool. It looks like basically you'll have the face and you have the option of wearing having like the ninja mask or not. What I'm guessing that's going to be is just a sticker. You can choose to put the sticker on there or not. And then speaking of, they hinted that the next figureized standard will be of that character, Aya Mei. This was teased and said that they were working on it, so we don't really have any too much more information at the moment. This will be the first time that basically just a Gundam character will be out in the figure as standard line where we had the Nami was like, had like Mecha Musume, like I said, it's like half robot, half girl character. But this is going to be, as far as we can tell at this point, it's just, just the girl character in the figure as standard line. So it's the first time that they're doing that with any sort of Gundam character. So I guess the character must be pretty popular in Japan as well. And then one more figure eyes thing. There's a figure eyes mechanics Haro coming out in December for 1800 yen. This thing looks awesome. This looks like basically like... This is the Haro kit that we should have got before, where we have the Haro plot, and they're great in the different versions of the Haro plot, and all of that are really cool because they're so cheap and simple and really quite nice. But this is like a full-on kit where it's like has a much more uh, complicated inner frame, and you can put an LED in it. Unfortunately, it's using the the two LED light thing that Bandai sells separately for like two thousand yen. It's like twenty bucks extra that you have to pay for this just to put the LED unit in there, unless you wire it up yourself. So that's unfortunate, but it does look really cool. Like I said, really nice inner frame. And uh, like with all the Figure Eyes Mechanics kits, uh, I recently, not too recently, a while back, I reviewed the Figure Eyes Mechanics R like kit. You can check that out. But uh, all the different versions, all the different kits in the Figure Eyes Mechanics line also come with like the one runner comes in a clear color. So you have the choice of using the regular parts or the clear color parts. So with this, it's just like the outer armor of the Haro, you'll have also in clear color as well. So that'll be cool. It's a cool way to be able to show off all the inner details of that. So this looks like it's going to be a really fun kit. And then one more Haro thing is the Haropla Mobile Haro. So in the Haropla line, we have now the Mobile Haro coming out in January for 1200 yen. I think this thing looks pretty awful. Uh, it seems like something that in theory would be cool, but it's like really weird, like steampunk almost sort of looking or like, I don't know, it's, I'm just not really into it. Uh, but it's this like robot exosuit for the Haro and yeah. Anyway, last thing here in the announcements is from the SD Cross Silhouette line. We have a confirmation of the SD Cross Silhouette Unicorn Gundam 03 Phoenix narrative version. Again, more narrative version Phoenix stuff. Big surprise. Coming out in uh, this month for 1,200 yen. So, um, yeah. Uh, there you go. It's the Phoenix out in SD Cross Silhouette. So, of course, if you get the Cross Silhouette frame, you can extend the proportions of that and have it more kind of cool looking. Uh, and then they did also show off uh, SD Cross Silhouette Banshee and Unicorn Gundam as well, but we don't have prices or release dates set for those. It's kind of strange that they're releasing the Phoenix first and not the regular Unicorn first and then like the Phoenix and Banshee later. So it's kind of weird, but whatever the reason is, uh, I'm sure it's just to, again, because the narrative film is coming out next month. So they want to just, of course, build hype for that. So there you go. Uh, that is it for all the announcements. Now, as far as the updates for this month, I, I because there was so many announcements that we had to go through, I'm not going to go through all the updates. There's just a couple things that we did get updates on that I want to share with you guys. 
One thing is the Metal Build Gun Barrel Striker Pack is out in January for 9,200 yen. Uh, we got a whole bunch more photos of this, so I just wanted to share this with you guys. Uh, it looks pretty intense, pretty much what you would imagine. If you know like what the quality of stuff from, from the Metal Build line in terms of like gimmicks and everything, details and everything, you could expect everything here that this Gun Barrel Striker Pack does, but it does look very impressive if you have the Metal Build Strike Gundam. This will make a really nice accessory for that, no doubt. We did also get some new pictures for the high res Gundam Astray Red Frame out in November next month for 13,000 yen. Uh, I really don't know what to think about this because sometimes when I look at it, I think, man, the RG, the, the red frame is looking pretty cool. It's like super swole and like super buffed out, almost too much. So that's why, I, I don't know, I think like sometimes I think it looks kind of cool and sometimes I think like yeah, this is like really too stylized for me. So I don't know how I feel about that. And especially after my experience building uh, the high res Wing Gundam Zero EW, I'm a little bit or more than a little bit cautious about the high res line at this point. So I'm not sure if I'll end up wanting to review that one or not. Right now I'm kind of leaning more towards not really wanting to bother with it. But I was happy to see that the new image is revealed that it is going to come with the shield and the beam rifle before we had seen it just with the sword because of course the sword is his main weapon. But uh, for me personally, I like the shield and rifle combo for the Astray Red Frame uh, more personally. So if, if I were to get this, I prefer that. And so it's cool to see that it does include that. So I think it, it would have been kind of surprising if it didn't. But... Just because of the fact that in the initial photos we didn't see any photos of that, I was concerned whether it was going to be including that or not, but it is going to be including that, so there you go. And the last thing I'll just mention quickly is about the HGUC Narrative Gundam Apex coming out in November next month for 5,500 yen. Uh, again, this is we, something we've known is coming out for a long time, and we don't really have... We've got a couple new images of this, but still not really that much. I feel like there's still gimmicks built into this that we just haven't really seen in much detail yet, which is unfortunate because I think... Bandai could be selling a lot more pre-orders and building a lot more hype for this if they would actually show off more of the gimmicks of it because I know there's more they're not showing off yet. And also we just finally got the price for that as, as well as another reason why I wanted to mention this again in this episode because the price, 5,500 yen, is no small price. Let's compare this to some other similar kits, shall we? So for example, the G-Self Assault Pack was 3,800 yen, also a Gundam kit and a big huge assault pack for that. Uh, 3,800 yen, much cheaper. And then the Barbatos and Long Distance Transport Booster, that thing, also 5,000 yen, so a little bit cheaper, but still, it's pretty close, but still cheaper. Uh, that, so that was also a whole lot of plastic in that kit, the whole Barbatos and then the whole big long range booster, of course. So uh, this one being 5,500 yen, that's definitely pretty pricey. So that's another indicator that there's probably more in the way of gimmicks than what we've seen so far built into this, because for that price, and for what it looks like so far, you know, it doesn't really seem like it's really that much plastic, but apparently it is. So there you go. So that is going to be it for this month's episode of Gunpla News, guys. I won't talk about any third-party resin or uh, featured kits in this month's episode just because there was so many announcements and everything that we wanted to get through. So I hope that that was informative. If there's anything that you maybe hadn't seen or heard about in the last month and a half or so, uh, hopefully now you're filled in. Again, I'll just remind you guys to please check the link to the Gumpla Talk GoFundMe down below. At least just go there, check it out. Uh, even if you're not able to donate and join in the giveaway uh, and join in supporting that cause, just to give it a share for us, that would be really super helpful. Share it in your local Gumpla groups or just share it wherever else you do Gumpla stuff uh, and just let people know that it's a cool chance to support a good cause and also to win some really cool stuff. And with that, guys, thank you so much for watching. A lot of new content is on the way, so stay tuned for more and leave any other further questions and comments you guys have there down below, anything I missed. Ah, I wanted to tell you guys that I have some new shirts on the way, and I can tell you that they're going to be Advanced Zeta themed for those of you guys who are Advanced Zeta fans. Uh, keep your eyes peeled. I'll let you guys know when those come out, but I've got some new shirts coming into my store. Uh, I do have still plenty of shirts there on the store there now currently, so if you want to check that out, the link to my store is always down below in the description of the video as well. Check that out. I've got some cool stuff on there, and I've got some more stuff on the way, so I'm looking forward to sharing that with you guys soon enough. In the meantime, guys, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Thanks for watching. See you next time.